What do a forest, a river and a mountain have in common? In New Zealand they have legal rights. What does that mean? And does it lead to better protection? As we drive through New Zealand's countryside, we pass countless meadows with grazing sheep and cows. When we see trees, they are often part of immense plantations made up exclusively of non-native pine trees. It's no surprise, the dairy, meat and forestry industries are big business in New Zealand. Nature has to pay the price. Biodiversity is low in these parts of the country. Where trees have been felled, a desolate landscape remains. As you can see, logging is a very big industry in New Zealand, which might make sense if you see land as a resource. But what if you look at things differently? The answer comes as soon as we enter Te Urevera. The native forest thrives here. On our campsite, all we hear is a stream and bird song. We reach Lake Vaikare Moana and go hiking. How come this area is so pristine? We are in an area which the indigenous people of New Zealand, the Maori, call Te Urevera. And they see this entire land as a living being, unique in the world. New Zealand has recognized that concept and by law given this area legal personality and rights. The land here is the home of the Tuoe, the local Maori tribe. At the visitor center, Holly Taylor explains why the legal recognition of Te Urewera is significant to them. It embraces our way of living, which means that we don't, we don't own the land. We belong to it. We belong to it and we have a responsibility to care for her, to care for Te Urewera. This is fundamental. In the Maori worldview, humans are just the kaitiaki, the guardians of nature. We must pass it on in good condition to future generations. It comes from the belief that everything is connected. Not only the people, but also the mountains, rivers, animals, sea and forests. They all originate from common ancestors. That is why humans belong to the land and not the other way around. It took the tour generations until 2014 for a law to be passed which confirmed that Te Urevera has its own legal personality and could never be appropriated or sold. The Tuoe were recognized as guardians. A board of trustees made up of Tuoe and government representatives can represent Te Urevera and defend its rights if necessary. The approach seems to be effective. The forest is not making way for pine plantations or farmland, but is kept pristine. We next visit the Wanganui River. The Wanganui River is shrouded in Maori tradition. According to legend, the river started as a teardrop from sky god Ranginui, while its path was created when Ranginui's son Taranaki made his way from the North Island Central Mountains to the coast. The local tribe regards the river as a sacred being of which they are part. I am the river and the river is me, is a proverb of the Wanganui tribe. 
They rely on the river for their spiritual, cultural and physical sustenance. The Thanganui River is another natural phenomenon that has received legal personality under New Zealand law. The new status gives the trustees power to defend the river's rights and protect it from further degradation due to pollution, commercial forestry, industrial agriculture and construction. Mount Taranaki is a perfect cone that stands tall in the middle of flatland. The local Maori tribes revere the volcano for its historical, cultural and spiritual value. It represents their ancestor, the son of sky god Ranginui. In 2017, the New Zealand government signed an agreement with eight Maori tribes. It is the first step to granting legal personality and rights to the mountain and the tribes becoming its trustees. We climbed the mountain to get a feel for it. So we're climbing Taranaki today and it's showing us its personality. The trustees will have a clear mandate to protect the mountain and restore its environment. There's the top of Mount Taranaki. We're not going all the way up because it's sacred. As is the whole mountain, it has legal personality, so we're respecting that and we're just enjoying the moment. The granting of legal rights to the forest, river and mountain is not just symbolic. It validates a different perspective, one wherein nature is at least equal to man and man's creations. That worldview further holds that we treat nature with the utmost respect, do not pollute or destroy it, and do not take more than it can give us. Only by living up to those principles we can ensure that areas of special significance are preserved for future generations. The more countries and people adopt that worldview and codify it in law, the better our chances of passing nature on to future generations become. If you like this video and want to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on social media, become our patron on Patreon, or subscribe to our email newsletter on our website.